to talk about a specific type of stem cell, which is called the bone marrow stem cell. Now, this cell has been known for a long time. Initially, bone marrow stem cells were studied because of their ability to make all the cells of the blood system. So, as you can see in the diagram, bone marrow stem cells are responsible for making red blood cells, white blood cells, and the different subtypes of white blood cells. Now, more recent studies in the last decade and in this decade have demonstrated that bone marrow stem cells not only make blood cells, but they can also differentiate or become different types of other tissues. As you can see in this diagram, the bone marrow stem cells can differentiate, can become heart tissue, liver tissue, uh, neurons in the brain, and also pancreatic cells and a variety of other cells. Now, if the bone marrow stem cell can become these different cell types, maybe one of the reasons why the bone marrow stem cells exists is not just to make blood, but also to heal damaged tissue. So, if this idea is correct, then one would anticipate that in situations of tissue damage, the bone marrow stem cells would leave the bone marrow and home to the damaged tissue to repair it. So here is an example in this study, the figure is showing you the bone marrow stem cells, the concentration in the blood of people who have had heart attacks. And as you can see on the up and down axis, on the, on the y axis, you can see the concentration of bone marrow stem cells in the blood. And these are quantified by CD34, which is the marker of the bone marrow stem cell. Now, as you can see, after the heart attack, there's a time-dependent increase in the number of cells in circulation. As controls, people with peripheral artery disease, with coronary um, vascular disease, they have low numbers of stem cells circulating, and young, healthy patients have high numbers of stem cells in the circulation. So what this figure is telling us that maybe the role of the stem cell is after the periods of tissue injury, it goes into circulation and then goes to where it is needed. Another situation of tissue injury is stroke. Um, in stroke, the brain tissue is damaged. As a result of occlusion, the blood's not getting there and brain tissue dies. As you can see in this figure, there is um, the patients after a stroke, there is an increase in the number of stem cells in the blood, but the patients that respond better after a stroke, the patients that recover better, they actually are the ones that have a higher number of stem cells. You can see on the y-axis is a stroke scale. The higher it is, the worse symptoms the patients have. And the first group, as you can see, are the ones that had high numbers of stem cells. The second group are the ones that had lower number of stem cells. So now we see this correlation between, on the one hand, patients who have tissue damage, and on the other hand, an increase in the stem cells in the circulation of these people. So if the stem cells are really homing to the area of injury, if this is really the case, then hypothetically, one could take stem cells from the bone marrow and just simply introduce them to areas where the tissue has been damaged. So one example of doing this is taking out bone marrow through the use of a simple procedure. In this slide, you can see a patient whose bone marrow is being extracted. Essentially, what this involves is inserting a needle into the hip into the iliac crest is called, and extracting uh, cells. Now these cells, these stem cells, are very safe. They have been used in over a thousand people in the published literature, and as you can see on this slide, there's been, they've been introduced in almost any way imaginable, uh, directly into the heart, uh, into the coronary artery, directly into the liver, and out of all these experiments, there have been no adverse effects noted. Now, the next question is, in what kind of situations do bone marrow stem cells actually help? And there's a wide variety of publications, and you can see more on this YouTube channel, but we'll just talk about two um, publications. The first one is patients who had a heart attack, and um, basically taking off the similar idea before that, when you have a heart attack, the heart is calling in the, the stem cells from the bone marrow. In this study, uh, bone marrow cells were taken of patients who had heart attack, and as you can see, before and after, the, the, the illustration is showing 
the highlighted area is the perfusion of the myocardium, which basically means how metabolically active it is. And as you can see, after the stem cell transplantation, there was an increase in the metabolism, and this correlates with increased uh, patient function and better recovery after the heart attack. Another example is a disease of peripheral artery disease, in which the, the lower limbs of the patients have poor circulation, and as a result, a large number of them have to have amputation. And as you can see in this figure, so from another publication, the number of blood vessels before bone marrow administration and after bone marrow administration, you can see a much higher proportion of blood vessels in the patients who receive the bone marrow. So these are just some examples we just wanted to touch upon the concept that bone marrow stem cells are called into the areas of tissue injury and also that one can administer bone marrow stem cells into areas of injured tissue with the ability to cause new regeneration of tissue. And you can see various examples of this on this YouTube channel at Cell Medicine, at the Cell Medicine channel, as well as on PubMed.com if you type in uh, bone marrow stem cell and the different diseases.